Hey everyone, welcome to another part of Disco Elysium. I hope you're enjoying these videos, and if you are, please do remember to hit like, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and leave a comment. The comments really help these videos get shared, and let me know that you would like to see more of this on the channel. Thank you. Ah, it feels good to be back on the street, back on the beat. Let's have a little explore. A glossy magazine, most able-bodied men. This issue hosts a top ten list. Jump jams! A popular music mag. Let's look, in, look for money, is that? Magnesium. Welcome to River Shaw. Uh, welcome to River Shaw. Announces the returned man. The remark isn't addressed at you, it's addressed at Kim. Racist lorry driver. Hey, I know Revachol. That's where we are. Don't you welcome to Revachol me. My grandfather came here from a 3,000 year old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Every school of thought and government has failed in this city, but I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. Tell him. It's men like you who keep Revachol. He pays you no attention. Making it that much harder for everyone to climb out of this post-war limbo. Limbo? What's going on here? Oh, come on, man. I just said welcome to Revachol. It's a lorry driver thing. I know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here. That I should watch myself and behave. But you see, I'm an officer of the RCN. It's actually my job to make sure you behave. I would advise you to remember that. Silence. The air between them becomes tense. Your partner needs backup. Now's your moment to shine. Fucking A, Kim! I've got your back! Give the lieutenant a punch on the shoulder. You do make a cute couple, you know that? The lorry man spits. The lieutenant exhales and resumes his regular calmness. Now that that's settled, we have a couple of questions. Whatever you say, officers. He waits impassively, cigarettes smoldering between his fingers. You could ask him to show you the soles of his boots. He definitely looks like someone capable of a lynching. Maybe he was present. Let me see the soles of your boots. Actually, first, got a smoke? No. <gasps> Breakthrough imminent in the long way home. Let me see your boots. Been admiring the stompers, eh? He grins. Sure thing. Check them out. He lifts his left foot, then the right. On the bottom of the man's boots, you see an intricate tangle of treads with no immediately discernible pattern. What's up with your soles? It's Revachol. Where did you get boots like that? Custom made. Cost me a pretty penny. He rubs the back of his balding head. But why? But when the invasion comes, he glances at the lieutenant. The last thing they see before the lights go out is illustrious Revachol. Doesn't look like the lieutenant cares. He just makes a little note. What is this invasion? Sounds more like immigrant bashing. Hey man, you know, there's all sorts of invasions. He looks at his boots and then you. I thought we could rely on the cops. We're in this together, whether you realize it or not. What are you hauling? Not much anymore. I'm here to pick up some cargo, but the dock workers are on strike, so it's a sit and wait on your ass situation. How long has this been going on? The strike? They've been at it for a while. A month? Two months, maybe? He gestures towards the lorries. But this here is just the last week or so. What kind of cargo are you supposed to pick up? Apples. Apples? Yeah, apples. He's giving you the runaround, let's be honest. You were bested. Son of a bitch! Thought I was supposed to be good at talking. Alright, we're done for now. Out of my sight. 
Report complete. Lonesome long way home. Here we go. Home awaits. Walk past Station 41, through the market, past Boogie Street, spearhead to the other side of the lake, the frozen eye at the center of the district. Past the video rental store on the corner, at the end of the street, lined with pine trees, a small house, no larger than a matchbox. 11 Voyager Road. You no longer live there, those times are gone. And so are those people. Why did you come here? Why are you still here? Where's the dealer? You have to get back to work, that's all you have now. Learning cap for perception raised to five. Speed gives one psych. Oh, drugs. Um, okay, so I don't have a home. I got excited then thinking I wouldn't have to pay that guy. I wonder if I forget that if I keep the information there. all this. Money on the street. Frit. There's the strike, huh? Yes. in the shop. Yellow roses, dozens of them, tulips too. The melancholy pop song. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. Look around or something. She returns to a magazine. What's that magazine she's reading? Ask her. You mean this? She looks at the cover, boasting a colourful photo of two girls kissing. This is Pop Stars. It's got, like, famous people in it. It's not for sale. Looks like it also has something called Police Della Mode, featured on page 34. This speaks to you. I approve of this. Very futuristic. Tap on the girls kissing. <laughs> Forget about all that. What this is fashion police what this is fashion police feature i think what is this fashion police feature um it's where they rate different outfits famous people wear it's kind of funny they're kind of mean it's about who's the most stylish hmm. point to her hat i bet your hat would take the prize Who's the numero uno guy in there right now, and does he look like this? Point at yourself. Um... Her lazy eyes scan up and down your body, assessing the situation. No, I don't think so. We are not the fashion police. We're the real police. Damn it. You mean this? This is pop stars. It's got, like, famous people in it. It's not for sale. Alright. I approve of this. Tap on the girls kissing. She pops her raspberry-flavored bubblegum and nods. The lieutenant frowns at you before turning to the clerk with an apologetic half-smile. What is this, Frit? I don't know. Frit? She shrugs. Why is it written with three Ts? I think they think that the extra T makes it funkier. It doesn't. She chews on her gum with disgust. The story goes that normal Freet with two T's, a men's workwear shop in Vredfort, was already taken, so when Freet Retail Inc. grew into a multinational corporation, they had to add an extra letter to avoid trademark infringement. I have questions. Um, okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but... She puts down the magazine. Can you tell me anything about the dead body? Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... Did you know the man who died? Not really. Not really? Does it mean you knew him a little? Um, no. I didn't know him at all. How long has it been there? I don't know. Really long? What do you think happened? Um, I don't know. No need to worry. The lieutenant's voice is soothing and professional. It's just standard procedure for us to ask around. If you hear anything, let us know, okay? Okay. 
She scratches her nose. Thanks for your help. Uh, she brushes a strand of hair off her face. She tries to return to her magazine. Can you tell me anything about this reality we're living in? Reality? You mean what? Reality? Economic reality? Or... I meant physical reality. I don't know. What about it? Where are we? We're in Frit. No, I meant where are we on a larger scale? As mankind? As a nation? Or... As a mankind? In a good place? She rubs her face, thinking. I mean, science is doing great, and this radio computer thing seems to be kind of big. I don't know. She shrugs and folds her magazine. What time is it? I don't know. Look on the clock. It's right behind you on the wall. The clock shows the time at 10.09. The hand seems to be still. The clock doesn't work. Yeah, it's 4.13. Oh, I won't bother you with this nonsense. Cool. She seems happy. Any ammonia? She looks up from her magazine, eyes filled with tired ennui. Yes, she hitches her thumb towards the end of the counter. What we have is there in the medicine cabinet. Take a look yourself. Kind of want to point to her um, hat. Is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. She puts down the magazine. Damn it! I wanted to point to her hat and make a comment. Pharmaceuticals. Their logo is the Bloodless Rose, pure white, untouched by harm. Products do you want? Okay, we don't want to spend any money yet. But I want to see what they sell. Knickknacks. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf between a display of croissant and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent. Expect for the big frit slogan. I want to buy a raincoat. Plus one to endurance. Hell yeah, I do. But I don't have the money. And what's in here? The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says one bottle ten cents. Oh, that's the tear machine. But what is it? She knits her brow, confused. It's a machine for tear? You know, you find tear outside, like bottles or whatever, put it in the machine, it gives you money. Oh, how do I pick up for that? Need a bag, I guess? We used to have some, but we gave them all out. Feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. I'm sure there's some out there. Outside, somewhere. <laughs> oh, what's this? Shimmering wall of vices, a colorful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles lie in the shop wall, inviting you closer. There, in that dark green glass, a world of ruby, all in vain. The great flowing river of warmth, wine, alcohol, beer, alcohol, love alcohol. I'm in heaven. I need it all so bad. The clerk looks at the wall of goods behind her. Mm, sure. If you want something, I can get it for you. Just let me know and pay and stuff. She adjusts her hat. I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health, but I guess you already knew that. Don't ask, don't look, don't do anything here. Go away, get back to work. Do you sell any under-the-counter vices? No. She fixes her hair underneath her cap. Frit only sells legal drugs, like the law says. Tell me more about these products. What do these do? Physique, morale. Physique, morale, physique, morale. Cigarettes, intellect, minus one health. Um, the pale-aged vodka is special, I guess. It's stored in pale for a couple of years, which makes it super expensive and super strong. Okay, what will consuming this stuff do to my body? He stares at you, unsure. I mean, I already said it'd hurt you. I don't know what else they do. Drugs give powerful bonuses. This is a tutorial to your main stats while dealing damage to your health or morale. Cigarettes raise intellect whilst damaging your health. Alcohol raises physique whilst damaging your morale. Dude, that vodka is expensive. <laughs> She's out of our hair. Every character we meet is so good. Kind of want us to be a drugged up superstar cop. 
422. I want to go and speak to the knob in here. See if I can get away with not paying because I'm so broke, dude. Or the pawn shop, which I figured was going to be that way, but maybe it's, uh... Do you know what? Let's ask the lady again where it is. What do I even have I could sell? The pen. Three. Four. Let's call it nine. It's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. <laughs> Damn it! Uh, let's just see what he says. I don't want to be homeless. You little son of a bitch. We're so broke. We probably should have been making money instead of... Uh, rummaging in the back there for like the whole first day, but you know. It's all about money, you know? Who's this guy? So is the kitchen open now? Can I help you? He arches an eyebrow. Uh, Sue. About that money I owe. Yes, have you got it? How much do I owe you again? For the drinks? 30. I've seen something here at the Whirling Gart. A thing I need to talk about. He rolls his eyes. What thing? I saw a sign that said the mess hall is reserved for the Union. Yes, not the whole damn Union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. He tosses his head in disdain. They come here in the evenings, dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit, but they're good customers. They place big orders, and they always pay on time. He hates the Union, but begrudgingly recognizes its power over him, so he's directing his frustration at you instead. Retaliate. It's a shame you've got to suck up to the Union to stay afloat. I don't. I'm simply providing a service, or really facilitating the offering of services to paying customers. He runs out of steam. It doesn't matter, I don't have to explain myself to you. The lieutenant gives you a meaningful nod. We should find out who this loud faction is occupying the booth. Loudness means talkative. We need info. How do we find them? We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. He looks towards the booth. Men are hungry. Even men on strike. You glance at the clock on the wall behind the manager. Ha! It's after four. The sign said reserved starting four. Why isn't anyone in the mess hall? Good question. He turns to the manager. They're probably getting drunk or protesting something somewhere. Laying low after the, you know, lynching. Whatever he may feel about you, he can't miss the opportunity to throw you a look of what he assumes is shared understanding. Go with it. Nod sagely. I think I see. The Union guys think they're untouchable. They probably fucking killed that guy or something, and now they think they can hide out till it all blows over. It's fair weather again in Martinez. Hmm, the lieutenant thinks. I have a feeling we'll make their acquaintance sooner or later. By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. I saw another thing. I didn't see anything. <laughs> I was fucking with you, Garth. Yeah, got any money in here? Oh, hang on. I had a thought. A thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be the Whirling's cook. As you step in, he nods towards the table and says something in a completely foreign language. The only word you can make out are Gorisi and Kubek. Must be his name. Gorisi. Gorisi Kubek. Sounds representative. Ah, uh, Mr. Kubek. I'm here on official police business. The man puts his cup down and replies something, his left hand drawing arcs in the air. You got some impressive pots there. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. Okay, stay masculine. <laughs> An aroma of spices, alcohol, and tomato hangs in the air. Yoink. 
blue door, a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock painted blue. You immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue is for mystery. Touch the door. The cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. The stainless steel is door flush with its frame on every side. Push. Does not budge. I wonder where this leads. You do? The lieutenant regards you with patient skepticism. It's a door in the back of a kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? It's part of the whirling in rags. There's something about this place that makes me want to know. Eccentric, but okay. I suppose we could look into it as a side investigation. He's not bothered by your eccentricity. He seems genuinely intrigued himself. No, the door is a mega investigation. <laughs> the door and the main investigation will merge into a stereo investigation. Hardly. He looks at the door, then you... Anyway, God is the person to ask about this. It's cobalt blue. Can I help you? I saw a thing. The mysterious steel door. Oh, the door, sure. Nothing mysterious about it. It's a door. Do you know what's behind it? Do you have... No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there, and I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for 10 years. It's the Frit Warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. He runs his fingers across the counter to check for dirt. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. I think you'd like to know what's back there. Fine, okay, a little. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. So I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, after the animals, and I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. Hmm, that's just reminded me that I probably should call that woman on the radio. Let's see if there's anything here. Hello again, sweetie. Bye. Man, it's getting late. Most people are in bed after nine, or not long after. The streets are emptier. By two, everyone's asleep. Oh boy. Games with time limits, you know? Alright, let's use that radio. Alice, this is Firewalker. Reconnect me to the 41st. 10-4, come in. Firewalker, over. Wait, before you say anything stupid, think it through. I need information, not fear. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. 10-4, sir, I'm not hearing your question. Um... Hold on. Are you alone in the room? I need confidential information about myself. That's a negative, sir. I got a 10-2 here. Over. Uh, so he's not alone. I'll ask him later. God, I want to know. Fuck it. Any news about my family? Ten, uh, excuse me, sir? Over. You probably don't want to continue on this road. I just thought you might have heard of them. That's all. Uh, no, sir, I haven't. You're not really keen on mentioning your home life. I've always assumed things weren't that good on that front. Over. I wanted to know if you got my badge's description right in your report. Can you read it to me? Name, rank, date of birth. What? What is it? He's still on the line? He wants to verify the information on his badge. But of course, it says Dick Mullen, High General of the Revolution Cavalry Force. Tell him to stop wasting time. 
Refer to me with my full name in the future. 10-9, repeat message. I didn't get that, sir. Say my name. Sir, I will not have you talk to me in this manner. Please just say my name, Jules. Uh, what? What is it? What can he possibly still want from us? He seems intoxicated and he keeps asking me to call him by his name. Mullen's drunk, emotionally aggressive. That's new. Wrap it up. Don't indulge in his drunken antics. Have I ever told you about my life before the RCM? 10-4? Well, that's a... Uh... Does he actually want something or is he hell-bent on disrupting our work? He asked if he ever told me about his days before joining the RCM. For God's sake, cut this shit out. Tell him to stop wasting time and be a goddamn policeman for a change. Sir, Satellite Officer Vic Mayer says, I heard him. Let's wrap this up. I need you to connect me to a civilian, a Sylvie. She may have reported a murder. Mm -mm -mm. Actually, before we get into any conversations with anyone else, we should really spend some of our skill points. <clears throat> Alright, what have we got? Logic is looking pretty low. I think that's from some... Oh, it's from one of my thoughts. Ugh. I miss my logic. <laughs> I miss my logic talking to me. Uh, endurance sucks from damage. Mm. Empathy has been pretty useful. Inland Empire has been amazing. Drama is a nice one. Go to Party Planet, love and be loved by drugs. Ba -da 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 -da. God, it's so hard to know where to put stuff. I think rhetoric might be. I don't like the way he talks to me, but it would be nice to be able to actually get the better of people. Wield raw intellectual power, deduce the world. I want stuff to be crazy, you know? Thank you, Tulip, for the 200 bits. More talking to animals. I swear, it just goes from the same spells every time. There's like so many of those, but we get so many repeats, but it's like they repeat each night. Talking to the animals. Anybody see the Dr. Doolittle uh, trailer with Robert Downey Jr.? Looks like it wants to be so much more epic than it is. Cool for high-strung investigators. Shoot now, ask questions later, cops. Surprise haters. A man of unrestrained pleasure, an unrepentant Lothario, who leers at people with a bottle of speed and a plastic bendy straw in either hand. But with low e ele electrochemistry, you'll be too innocent to be effective without a working knowledge of drugs and sex. This city will be difficult to understand. High flyers, party enthusiasts, cops who need lightning. I like this one. We're going to go with the drugs one. Oh wow, that timing! It was right when I did the I level up. Something new. Friend of the Fae. Once again, thank you for the support there. Charm men and women play the puppet master. I feel like we should push this because it's our signature. Become a genius. Um... Let's get suggestive, baby. And I'm really liking Inland Empires. Animate the inanimate. Like, I want to have conversations with my clothes and inanimate objects. I want it to be really super weird. I do kind of need to boost my agility and stuff, though. Maybe sit on this other point that we have. We have one point left. Maybe just sit on that for now.
All right, civilian. Kim, didn't Garth give you Sylvie's number? Yes, hold on. Received. Calling. Start slapping a marching rhythm on your thighs. Give it a minute, she might be busy. Takes a bit to get to the phone. Just wait, relax. Officer, she finally returns. I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Hello? A female voice greets you through stack. It sounds like she's a million miles away from here. Sylvie, I believe we've met before. This is me, a detective from the Whirling in Rags. Oh, right. She recognizes your voice almost immediately. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? You can hear resentment in her tone. She's not thrilled to be talking to you again. There is no resentment in her tone. She wants you to ask her out. No question about it. Let's ask the other questions first. All right, settle down, electrochemistry. You quit your job at the Whirling. Why? You mean, why did I leave the bar? You can hear her tense up on the other side. I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Wait, why aren't you comfortable discussing it with me? I... Let's just say I left because I needed to get away from someone? From who? You know who. You think you hear a sliver of accusation in her words. Did you leave because of Garth? What? No, why would you even think that? He told me he asked you out. Are you saying it didn't happen? <laughs> Sylvie, don't be afraid of that pig. You gotta stand up for yourself. So you do agree that quitting your job because someone asked you out is an overreaction. Uh, He told me he asked you out. Please don't bring him into this. It's none of your business. I already said I don't want to talk about it. You're messing everything up again. No, I want to know. You mean, why did I leave the bar? I'm not really comfortable. Why aren't you comfortable talking about it to me? Get away from who? You mean me? You needed to get away from me? I really don't want to talk about this. Let's just forget about it, okay? Okay, did you leave because of Garth? And then we'll be like, stand up against that pig. Oh, let's just go in full dick. You do agree that quitting your job because someone asked you out is an overreaction. Don't bring Garth into this. Okay, damn it. Was it you who called the police? Not me. But why didn't you call? Didn't a corpse behind your workplace bother you? What? Of course it bothered me, but I thought the union knew about the corpse. What does the union have to do with anything? No one calls the police. You can hear her adjust the receiver in her hand. The union would get angry. What do you mean by that? She seems to be looking for words. What the union says goes. People listen to them. They take care of their own, which is like everyone here. Garbage. I am the authority here. Hmm. Why exactly did you let a corpse hang in your own backyard for weeks instead of calling us? I, I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. Push her further. Show her the error of her ways. No, don't push her. It sounds as if she's about to cry. Let me get this straight. You ignored the law to save your own skin? I I didn't know I had to report it. I, I thought someone would take him down eventually. A voice breaks. It's a little late for tears, isn't it? Should have used them to summon the police earlier. You can almost hear the girl getting smaller on the other end of the line until she almost drowns in static. Do you know who made the call? No. You can hear her regaining control in the background. I don't know. It was someone else. The lieutenant makes a note. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Alright, next question. Have you seen my badge? Yes, I know who you are. You're a police officer, the law. I think she got it. Good job. My badge is missing. Have you seen it anywhere? Oh, no, I haven't. Real policemen have uniforms too, by the way. Where's yours? Oh, my uniform too. God, I should really look into that. <laughs> Kim doesn't have a uniform. He seems real to me. 
He's in plain clothes voluntarily. It's different from not knowing where your uniform is. There are officers who wear the signature Perseus black uniforms to the highest ranks in RCM and they end up buried in them as well. Others do it more casually. Looks like you're one of them. Have you seen my gun? Please, no, not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. She sounds beyond exacerbated. I showed you my gun? When did it happen? You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating and... She stops, not sure if she should continue. What? What did I do? You are waving it around in everyone's face, begging them to describe it. You said it calms you. You started making suicide jokes. It got pretty graphic. Oh, those again? I've been trying to wean you off them. Off of what? When you put your gun, your actual gun, on your temple, and you pretend to shoot your brains out off of that, people don't like it. Some poor sod was trying to eat his pudding while you were screaming, spit-flying, imitating the mercy shot right next to him. Spat some f in his food. I don't think he touched it after. I should have killed myself. No, please, no more suicide threats. Thank God you don't have that stupid gun anymore. Why would I threaten to kill myself? Look at this world. I would love to stay. Silence on the other end of the line. Alright, I don't know what to say. Me neither. Yes, but what happened to my gun? No idea. All I know is next you are waving around money instead, saying things like, Big bucks cannot lie, and guns can't buy money, but money can always buy guns. Have you seen my uniform? Uniform? I never saw you in any uniform. You had your things on. Disco things. <clears throat> you want to grab a cup of coffee sometime? No, absolutely not. Alright, I think I got everything I need. Thanks. I hope so. Don't call me again. Bye. She's ready to hang up. Wait. Why does she seem angry with you? Oh no, look, minus one. <gasps> this would have been 100%, but look, minus one made her cry. Minus one asked her out. Plus two, inexplicable feminist agenda. Yes, you've obviously done something to upset her. At the whirling in rags when she was still working there. Wait, before you go, you're mad at me, right? Tell me, what did I do? I can't remember anything. I'm not mad, it's just... You were so drunk and so emotional all the time, and then the skewer thing happened. It just made me want to quit. What skewer thing? The stuffed bird, the great skewer, you threw it against the wall while screaming, Fuck that bird! and laughing like a maniac. I think you said it had been giving you shit ever since you got there. Bitch bird got what was coming to her. Okay, officer. Her voice is withdrawing as if she's moving away from the speaker. Crackling static, more static, and yes, more of that sweet static. The violence of your words is scaring her. So you're telling me I was the one who made you want to quit? Yes, obviously. You were the worst client I've ever seen, and I've seen so many assholes in that place. I've had sailors fighting, union guys grabbing my ass, kids stealing booze. A guy was glued to the karaoke machine every night for two months, but you... Go on. I want to know what I did. Well, you were worse than all of them, honestly. Borderline aggressive. Even about little things, like not turning down the volume at 3am. I even liked one of those songs you kept listening on repeat. No more, I hate it now. Which song? We Go On by The Ooh. Or The Double O. She sighs. I can't even listen to it anymore. You've turned it into a parody. Sorry. Sorry about the song. To hell with the song. Then there was your room, your project, an experiment, see how bad it can get in there? I tried to send the cleaner, but you wouldn't let me. You threatened to make me understand. I had no idea what you meant, and I don't want to know. And then you screamed something about how you're actually a really cool guy, and no one understands it. One of the coolest guys there is. The coolest guy in Jamrock. Something about disco. It sounds intense. And then, I had to deal with your toilet, the one you clogged with police documents, causing water damage downstairs in the kitchen. I won't even mention you waving your gun around, harassing customers, threatening to sing karaoke, threatening to kill yourself. Wait, police documents? The ones I had to wrench out of your toilet. What happened to them? 
I don't remember what I did to your damn papers. I don't remember every little thing I do. Especially when there's a hurricane loose. It's your fault for losing them, not mine. Something in you wants to immediately forget about this as if there was a reason you threw them away. Alright, I get it. I wasn't a very good tenant. No, you really weren't. You were simply the worst. <laughs> well, you're the worst tavern wench I've ever seen. Girl, loosen up a little. Don't you ever party, huh? <laughs> These options. I was trying to show you the world of tomorrow, the great panic at the end. Let's be a, let's be a dick. She already shut us down anyway. Loosen up, huh? God, I, I knew I shouldn't have brought it up. Just try not to call me again. Let's pretend it never happened. When I spoke to Garth, it seemed like he thought you left because of him. Wait, really? No, this is absolutely not true. I like him. I really do. Didn't he cross a line when he asked you out? No, I was actually flattered. I've always liked him. It's just bad timing with the corpse. There's a pause. You can see her on the other side. The telephone cord coiled around her index. I didn't know what to say to him later. Then you came and destroyed the place. So I left without explaining. Maybe I should have told him, Dude, if this gets us in and we don't have to pay, I'll tell him. Okay, but don't mess it up. Don't take out your gun or something. Alright, what else did I sing? Besides the double O, I'm looking for a song. All sorts of things. Disco, rock, disco and rock. Help me identify this one particular song. Which one would that be? It was really sad. Sad? I think you mean the smallest church in St. Saints. Butchered that right up. Her voice carries a tone of disappointment. Interesting. You still have to find it, however. Alright, thanks for talking with me. You hear a sigh of relief on the other end of the radio. Wordless, the call cool breaks, and then the familiar voice. Mm -mm. Anything else I can help you with? Connect me to Sylvie again. Hello, you recognize her voice. Hey, it's the police again. Great, she doesn't sound thrilled. What else do you need? I got everything I need. <laughs> Sorry, just wanted to fuck around. Yes. All right. Mm -mm -mm. Tell me about the case. Would you say this is a mysterious case? The lieutenant considers your question a moment before answering. No. Why not? Lieutenant shrugs. The deceased is a security guard for a corporation involved in a labor dispute. It doesn't take a DeLorean polymath to put the pieces together. I just don't see the case getting more mysterious than that. I was thinking something otherworldly might be involved, you know, something supernatural. I can assure you nothing like that will happen. Do you know why not? Are you sure? I think something's already happening. No, something isn't happening because it's not part of... He makes a precise hand gesture. Reality. There's something the lieutenant isn't seeing. The universe is too irrational, too morally complex. You should convince him. Ooh, options. <clears throat> Convince Kim there's a sexy dark mystery twist in the case. Oh, I want that to work so badly. My Inland Empire it needs to be, it's a legendary roll, 28%. I'm gonna save that roll. I might throw another point into there. I am at a genius level though. Yes. Ah! Only banal things strike you at the core. You're a very banal person with a very small soul. Oh my god, my morale as well. One you should be ashamed of. It's no wonder the soft one doesn't want it back. It was right to abandon you. Fine. Fine, Kim. Have it be normal. <clears throat> Just 
walking around with my rubber gloves on. Okay, I'm hoping, I want to go and tell him, be like, yo, she likes you, dude, now let me off of the money, because it's getting so late, I don't think I'm going to be able to get the money together. And I don't want to be hobo cop. Hey, bud. Hey, bud, there's my buddy. There's my favorite guy. <clears throat> I talked to Sylvie, she left because of me, not you. Wait, what? He looks up, surprised. What about the bird? The bird? Yes, the bird. I found it lying on the floor with a broken wing the morning she left. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I'm not going to confess to breaking it. He'll charge me. It's like right there in front of him. Uh, she said it was an accident. Why didn't she just tell me that? I don't care about stuffed birds. I care about my employees. He stumbles with words, shaking his head. All right. He calms himself. Did she say anything else about me? You know, did she say anything about me? Nah. <clears throat> she said you're nice, but also her employer. I mean, come on, the power vertical here. Shake your head. <laughs> she said she was flattered. It was just bad timing. Really? The man doesn't know what to say. He wipes his brow and stares at the counter. I, I should give her a call then. Thanks, I guess. He gives you a short nod. Was there anything else? Or can you give him a moment? Somehow you realize this is not going to net you any professional discounts. Already he's reverting back to defensive. Fuck. About that money, huh? Have you got it? How much do I owe you? 30. Alright. Cool, bud. Enjoy your new relationship. Thanks to me. On the phone. Can you pour me a drink? No, same thing, same, same thing, okay. Same thing again. <laughs> I want a fucking drink, asshole! Well, you're not getting it. He slams his hand on the counter. Asshole. This is a thoughtful exchange, but can we move on? Fuck! Oh, let's go knock on that girl's door. We're so getting kicked out. I'm gonna go look in my apartment one last time. Still stand by getting a book to pass the time, but where will I take people that I, you know, seduce with my amazing looks? Nothing. The lieutenant gives you a glance. He doesn't like where this is going. Try the handle. What are you gonna do, Kim, huh? Got a problem with this? Yes? Wait, get out the way. Going in my room. Kim tries not to look at your broken down bathroom door. Kim also tries not to look at the pile of tape viscera on the carpet, or the weird suitcase on the hat rack, or the potted plant dying in the corner, but it's all just too morbid to ignore. I did it my way. This is where the magic happens. And by that you mean crimes against humanity? This is an expression of me? my individualism? I have no idea what that means. He looks towards the exit longingly. Wow, you work hard. I do? Yes, you hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep it real and provide. Guess I do, yeah. Oh yeah, like a horse. A workhorse for hard work. What hard work do I do? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps, cracked down, cracked asphalt, mosaic sand, and the linoleum after you re-emerged. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh. People are evil. You didn't make it that way. You won't let it break you. You ride. I fucking ride till I die, bitch. 
That's just what it's like, life and death. But you got gills on your side, baby. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the Franco Negroes and the Solas. It ain't easy, but you do it day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. I guess I've made some gills, sure. Sure, sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? But you still hustle 24-7, right or day? Now ask yourself, are you rich? Uh, no, I'm actually not. That's right, you work harder than anyone. You almost rode yourself to the grave and you're still practically a hobo. Why is that? Uh, fucking taxes, man. I don't know. Why am I so poor? It's because that god guy right in my ass. That god man has set himself up. One of those self-replicating money structures. You should learn from it. Don't play the victim. Think, hustler. Think with your head. The system is broken. Boo-hoo. The system is broken. The establishment is keeping me down. That's not a fuck yeah attitude you're used to. What is this? Why are you so poor? Fucking taxes, man. That's right. 100% fucking G-Man's got his jam covered sticky fingers in your pocket, stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, F, so much as sneeze. Every time I sneeze? Every time you wipe your ass, they got their direct and indirect modes of taxation, sales tax, excise duty, extraction tax, alimony, one tax doesn't have a name. There's the stuff people in other countries pay for that makes them ask for more money from you here. Total tax duties add up to 98% of all your money. No fucking way. I guess I'm a free market fundamentalist now. Opt in. <laughs> this isn't helping me solve my money problem. It's making me into free market type. I'm fucking opting in. Here you go, hustler. Fight the righteous fight. Free the people. Keep it real. Keep it street. Keep foaming at the mouth furiously on the tax issue. Hey. Psst. Who, me? Yeah, you. Word on the street is you're ready to start building communism again. Uh, again? Yeah. You're ready to start building communism again? We've built it before, they've built it before, hasn't really worked out yet, but neither is love. Should we just stop building love too? Can't argue with that. So what about all that communism you promised to build? Word on the street is you've woken up from a thousand years of slumber promising to erect a version of communism many times greater than any attempted before, is that true? How come there's word on the street? You keep saying things like down with the bourgeoisie, eat the rich, sodomize the landowners, impale the people who have more than 25 real in their pocket, literally murder all human beings regardless of political beliefs. That kind of stuff. All right, that sounds like me. Funky style, very funky. Tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? Or do we get right down to it? Roll up your sleeves, start building communism. Oh yeah, get the firing squads and the animal wagons ready. Wait, what? Firing squads? You didn't say anything about those. Too late to back out now. Can't make an omelette without breaking a few million eggs. Roll your sleeves up further. Breathe in the pristine air. Alright, things just got pretty weird. The bed is cold. Not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. The option to go to sleep becomes available every night after nine. No time to rest yet. Oh, we're running out of time. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do hit the like and leave a comment to let me know, especially on this one with it being Disco Elysium and a long playthrough. If you want to see more of this on the channel, you got to let me know. Otherwise, come to the live stream twitch.tv slash madmorph. We'll be playing some more of it there. I also want to thank the developers for sending us a key so we could take a look early. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.